Hello golfers, everyone these days is chasing club speed. A brand new idea for a backswing and downswing movement that might increase club speed has been making the rounds amongst many golf instructors. So it is a good idea to understand what the concept is based on and do a risk benefit analysis for those of you who wish to incorporate the movement into your swing for more club speed. The movement requires golfers to increase their frontal plane ground reaction force moment. Let's understand what frontal plane is, what ground reaction force means and what a moment of a force is. From the perspective of the torso, a side bend or lateral flexion movement is one that takes place in the frontal plane. Ground reaction force is simply an indication of how much force a golfer is putting into the ground which is being resisted by the ground. Finally, the moment of a force is the ability of a force to cause rotation rather than straight line motion. It is said that the longer the moment arm or perpendicular distance between the center of mass and the line of action of the ground reaction force, the more frontal plane moment one can expect. The moment arm in this picture is the orange line near the golfer's pelvis. An increased frontal plane moment would, in theory, help a golfer to increase torso trail side side bend in the downswing. The movement golfers are being told to make to benefit from the frontal plane GRFM is to bump their trail hip several inches away from target in order to move the golfer's center of mass away from target too. They are also being told to lift the torso upwards slightly or as some refer to it, up weight or upload it a bit. In the downswing, the idea is to keep the body's center of mass as far from the long blue arrow coming out of the lead foot that you see in this picture which indicates ground reaction force. So, in a risk-benefit analysis, does a golfer wish for a large side bend? Keep in mind, more body movement will mean more momentum or quantity of motion, which will translate to an increase in club speed. But if club speed at all costs is the desired outcome, why not simply run up to the ball like, like Happy Gilmore? Surely the GRFM movement will steepen the downward attack angle of the club as the trail side abdominal and back muscles contract more forcefully to side bend more. Such a movement is bad for the low back too. Most importantly, if the golfer hangs back a bit in the downswing to increase the moment arm, can he or she then shift weight at a later stage? Only if he or she is fast and strong enough. If not, the hang back close to impact will result in directional issues. Additionally, in my opinion, the hang back will prevent or delay the upper and lower bodies from matching up or stacking on top of one another. This will prevent a purely rotary movement from happening. Why does that matter? Torso rotation is important for passing energy up the kinematic sequence from the pelvis to the shoulders to the arms which and it is also the only movement that can give both increased club speed and better ball direction. So if the upper and lower body are never really stacked up on top of one another and the upper body always lists to one side or the other, only the muscles of that side can be used efficiently resulting in a poorly executed rotation. The movement might end up being mainly up and down and side to side with no proper body part sequencing. But for some golfers such as Kyle Berkshire, it may not matter. Is there any research to support the GRFM movement? And what do the researchers advise based on their findings? There is only one study on the topic and the authors do not make any suggestions to golfers about how to incorporate anything from their findings. The reason the authors do not make any recommendations is because their findings are merely correlational. 
There are small or at best barely moderate, which means an R of 0.3 or greater, correlations between the frontal plane ground reaction force moment for the driver and the 5 iron and club speed. And because a correlation does not imply a causation, it is not possible to say that shifting the center of mass back and up will definitely increase club speed. Moreover, the authors do not report the ideal length of an effective moment arm. Why does the pitching wedge of their study show an almost large correlation to club speed while 5 iron and driver are much smaller correlations? A law of diminishing returns perhaps? Look at the correlation between the minimum upward force and club speed. Once again, quite small. So, Every golfer should decide whether the considerable risks of a GRFM movement and the considerable unknowns such as how much and when to make the suggested movements are worth it as the quality of contact might not be as precise and the potential for injury might increase. Is greater club speed which might not even translate to greater ball speed depending on the centeredness of contact worth your while? Believe me folks, in the golf swing, less is always more.